So before we get started on the actual coding, we will have to create the menu for changing these keybinds. And for this tutorial, I'm only gonna, going to use one external asset. And this asset is just a simple yellow, um, yellow sprite here with two different kinds of edges. So it's a little darker on top, it gets lighter, and then it gets like a brownish here. So basically, you can easily follow the tool without making this because you can just use a standard asset in Unity and I'll show you how we can do that in a, in a minute. But if you want this uh, background to be blue or something else, like look a little more fancy, just a plain color, well, then you will need to make like a, a square sprite like this. When you have imported your sprite or if you don't want to use any sprite, um, just continue on without importing it. Then we'll need to create um, a UI element here. And by the way, if you import your sprite, remember to select it and set the texture type here to 2D and UI so that we can use it for the 2D and UI in our game. And click the apply button after. So now we have in imported it, we will need to create by clicking create button, go to UI. And then we need to create an image. And this image is going to be our background panel. As you can see here, it actually just popped up under a canvas. And the reason that it pops up under a canvas is of course, because we can't render anything in our um, our game if uh, we don't have a canvas or we can't in render any UI element if we don't have the canvas. So it automatically adds a canvas if it doesn't exist already. So you can see if I take the image and place it outside the canvas, it disappears. And if I place it inside the canvas, it appears again. So this is going to be my background. So if, if you're not going to use any sprite, you can simply go to the color here and set the background to the color that you actually want. But I'm not going to use the standard. I'm going to use a source image. So I'm going to click on the image, select the source image here on the little radio button, and then select the menu panel. So this is going to be our background. So we might as re well rename it by clicking on it and pressing F2, or we can go up here and write uh, on what here the name of the of the background so i'm just going to write background here so that i can recognize it so when we have done that we need to scale up the background so it fits our screen so if we take it put it up in the top left corner here hold shift down and then scale it up so it fits with the height and then you can take one edge without holding shift down and then scale it out here so right now i think it looks fine it, it takes up almost all the screen space but if I play my game now, if I select maximize and play and play the game, you'll notice that it doesn't take up the whole screen here. And that's because we haven't set up our canvas correctly yet. Because right now the canvas scale is being set to, if you select it, the canvas scaler here is set to constant pixel size, which means if it has 100 pixels, well, then it is 100 pixel no matter what resolution you're running. And as you can see, if, if we just say that this height here is 100 pixels, well, 100 pixels on this screen is way more space than 100 pixels on, uh, uh, wait, yeah, where it takes up way more space on the screen than 100 pixels on this screen here. So to make sure that it scales with the screen size, you have to select um, the constant pixel size here on the canvas, if you select that and set it to a constant, uh, sorry, a scale with screen size. So if we do that, you'll see that it's a little bigger now because now it fits the screen size and then we can play our game. And now it takes up the same amount of screen space no matter what resolutions we're running. And then we need to define the area in which we're going to put our labels and our buttons. And that area is defined by adding another image. So right click on your background go to UI and then select an image. And this image is simply going to define or encapsulate the area where we are allowed to place our buttons and our text. So just uh, click on your image and then right click on the image component here and click remove component because we don't need any, um, any image on it because it's going to be invisible. So we might as well just remove the component and then we need to take it and place it in the edge of this um, this background and then scale it all the way to the right so it has the same width as the background and then almost all the way to the bottom here because we need to leave out some space for the save button so basically the space you leave here underneath maybe it's hard to see in the video but there is like the edges right right here around here and all the space underneath here between these, this edge and the edge of the, the sprite 
is going to be space for the save button. So you decide how much space you want to leave. You can always adjust this later. Okay, so now we have defined our area. So let's try to add some text uh, to it just to see how it works. So this image here is going to be our encapsulated area. So we can call it um, uh, content area. So this is our content area. Um, you can right click on the content and select UI and text because in our game uh, we will need some, or in our menu, we need some text to indicate what the different key binds do. For example, one should say move up and so on. So this one could say move up. So you can select the text and write move up. And I want my color to be black, but you can also change, no, sorry, I want mine to be white, um, but you can also change to something else. But if you want to change the color, you can select the text go to the text script here and select the color here and then simply just change it to whatever you want. Here you can set the font size. For example, if you say you want it to be 30 and now it disappears because it goes outside the bounds of this box. Well, then you can just simply select the best fade option here so that it, it, it fits inside the box as good as it can. Um, besides our text, we will also need some buttons. So right click on the content area select UI and click on button. So these are going to be the buttons that we're clicking. For example, if we want to bind the move up, then we click on this button to bind it. And then we press some key bind on our, um, our keyboard to bind the new key. <clears throat> Here you can select the color. And this is going to be the color of the um, button image. So you can just select the color here and I have copied the color from before. This is the color that I used in the intro. Um, you can pick whatever color you want, but uh, I'm, I'm going to use this blue blue color. Besides that, we also have the text on the button and the text should also be white. I think um, I think it looks better with white. So let's just open up the button here so we can see the child elements, select the text and then change the color to white as well. Okay, so now we have our label um, that says what button do and the exact button and the button should just be with some key bind on it. This is going to be set from the script later on. So right now it's just W for example. Um, we are going to come back to these two later and um, let's just call this move up. Um, and this is going to be called up simply. Okay, so now we need to go to our content area because we need to add some um, what are they called? Some, some components to this so that we can actually um, pair up our labels and our buttons correctly. So go to the content area, select it and go to add component and then select a grid layout group here. You can simply just write layout or go to the layout here and then select the grid layout group down here. Okay, so now you can see that our objects here is placed in the top left corner. And that's, of course, not really what we want. We want to make sure that they fill out this area here. So basically, we need to set up this, um, what is it called, the, this, this component. First of all, we need to tell how much space there needs to be from the left side. So we can simply just add some padding to it. So just say that it's 20, for example. Then move the little to the right. Then we have some padding in the right side. So also say 20. And then some padding in the top, maybe 80 to move it a little down and the bottom it also needs to be a little way from the bottom so let's say it's five or something we can always adjust these to make it fit so each cell size is how the size is going to be like for each of these squares here right now the cell size is not very big so that's why I move up is squashed here and the button is squashed so let's try with 330 that's the width and the height might be like 65 or something yeah that looks kind of okay um, um, actually, I think this one needs to move a little more to the right. So you can take this and the cell size maybe and make the X a little wider. Let's say 60. No, that's, oh, okay, that's way too much. 360. Yeah, maybe 65 or something. Yeah. So now it actually there is kind of the same gap here as there is here. Maybe it's a little bigger here, but we can always adjust as I said. 
Um, anyway, what else do we need to do? We need to set some constraints here. The flexibility needs to be set to a um, fixed column count. And the fixed column count is now two, so there's two items and then starts on another row of items down here. So that we have a label and a button, label and a button and so on. So now we can actually start adding the other buttons. We need to move up, lift down, right, and a jump. So basically you can take these two, move up and move and a normal up one and right click on it and duplicate. And then you can see that it adds an up and a move up. And they're in the reverse order, so you need to take them here and then just replace the alignment of them. And we can just do the same thing again. And the same thing again. So if, if they come up in the reverse order, then just move them around. So move up, right, lift, down. And then we need to jump. So just duplicate this one more time. Okay, so now we have all the uh, all the buttons aligned here. Um, right now they are very close here. So we might want to add some spacing to it. So you can go to the content area here and then select the spacing and say the Y spacing should maybe be five or something. Uh, five is maybe a little low, or seven, yeah. I'll just give it a five, okay. So now we have set it as five. Well, then you can see that there is some spacing, yeah, in between the buttons as, as you want it. You can always adjust this as well. So now we have this button, we'll also need to add the save button. And the save button shouldn't be under this content area because it will take the button or unless you want it to be placed in the side here or here. But if you want to place it independent of these two columns here, you can simply go to the background instead of the content area, right click, go to UI and select a button. And this button we can simply just place down here. This is the save button. So it's a little smaller than the other buttons, but that's okay. Um, you can also select a color of this button here. Let's see what color I have. I use this color. So select the button, go to the color, and then set the color that you want. I want mine to be orange, for example. So here it is. Um, I would also change the text on it, so you can expand it, select the text, and write save, for example. And I also want this text to be white, because it looks better on the color. Okay, so there's a few things we can do to make it look a little better before we start coding. So let's open up our content area. So we have move up and up here. Let's select the move up first, which is the label out here. And we can make it look a little better by adding some shadow to it and some outline. So add component and write outline. And it, this adds like a black outline around the text. And then you can click add component and write shadow. There we go. So now there's also some uh, some shadow under the under the text. So you can play around with it. You can change the shadow to go further out by upping the the distance here and and do whatever. So you you can play around with this to make it look like you want. I'm just gonna keep it with these uh, two. Um, I'm simply gonna do the same to all the others. Let's just see. We have. You can just select the rest of these. Um, move up all these called move up you can simply select all of them and deselect the original one and click add component add the shadow to all of them add component and add the outline to all of them okay so now they all have some outline and some shadow on them <clears throat> when you've done that you can select move up one and change the name to move um, lift And then we need to change the text to say move lift. And of course the others also need to be renamed. Move down. And move down. Um, this one move was right and the last one is jump
Okay, as you can see, the text looks different in all of them, and that's because of this best fit. So I actually think it's a bad idea to have best fit on because you can see that it tries to fit the text into this, and the text fits better when it's moved down because it's longer. So it just makes it smaller here. So basically, just select all all these text here and remove the best fit here. As you can see, and now it now it actually has the same size all, all over. So maybe you want it to bold, so you can select them all again and then select the here where it says normal on the character and select bold. That might also look a little better. Okay, so now I think the text is fine if you play the game here. Yeah, I, I think this looks fine for this uh, test project. Okay, so now we need the buttons. And first of all, we need to rename them. We have up. This one should simply be renamed down. And this naming here is um, not down lift, of course. And this naming here is very important because we're going to use it in our script. So it's it's important that you write lift down, up, and right, and so on. And this down. And this is right. And this is just uh, jump. Okay, uh, down, what I do here, um, move down, there we go, now it looks better. Okay, so now we have the correct names on, on each button because we're going to use it in our script to translate it into the direction that we're moving, for example. Um, if you think it's confusing with the names that there's move up and up, um, then you can maybe rename these labels to move up text, for example, move left text move down text and move right text okay so now we have set that up we can also change the text in here of course so it looks better right now it's just a small w and um, we can simply just take our open up our button here and select the text and then you can do the same you can make the size uh, larger like 30 you can change this to bold and you can of course also add the component for for example outline or shadow let's just Go with shadow here. I don't know if I want to make it larger. 40. It can even be bigger, I think. Yeah. So let's keep it at 50 with all these. Let's just select all of them now. And then set it to 50 and make them all bold and get them as shadow. Okay, so now they all have a shadow here. And basically, you, you can change the text if you want to look fine here when you're not playing the game. But basically, we are going to change the text um, text from inside the script when we run it. So you can just this is just for like make it easier to see what you're doing when you're coding out here. Ah, not jump space, of course. There we go. Okay, so now we have set up some standard uh, key binds that it will have in the inspector. Uh, in yeah in in the scene can also add some shadow to the buttons maybe so you can select all the buttons here lift down right jump um and also the save button of course out here then we can add some shadow to them so it look a little better um and also in the save button out here you can of course select it and set the font to something larger like 30, no, it's a little too big, 25, yeah, and then add bold and add component outline, maybe, I don't know if we want to add some shadow, yeah, you can decide what you want to put, I'm not going to put an um, outline on these, at least I think it looks better without, um, let's try to remove it. Okay, so now our UI is actually set up and in the next video we can start um, coding our script so that we can actually move around or uh, add the functionality for moving and for um, changing the keybinds.